TDPS News takes you live to Breck Artery at the West Hollywood Children's Library. Breck? This is Breck Artery coming to you live from the Children's Reading Room at the West Hollywood Public Library. This seems an appropriate spot to discuss the outcome of the mythical fiscal cliff faced down by the mythical leaders in this country last week. Here in the Children's Theater, one day in the not-too-distant future, children will be regaled with heavily illustrated stories and puppet shows about how the brave elected civil servants in this country faced down the big bad financial crisis they themselves had created. According to their fable, if the magic words weren't uttered by the intractable obstructionist party by the stroke of midnight, the whole country would turn into a pumpkin, or at least outtakes from a Mad Max movie. Of course, that turns out to be as fictional as the bravery of those same spineless obstructionists who also last week couldn't muster the guts to vote to send disaster relief to those wiped out by Hurricane Sandy. But that's not fun, so let's get back to our tale. The story goes something like this. Once upon a time, in 2011, when the obstructionists refused to pay the bills on the debt they themselves had run up by refusing to raise the money they needed to pay the bills or to stop spending like a bunch of drunken fools, they got out their sabers and rattled them very loudly until they forced everyone to agree to a magical spell they called a sequester. The sequester spell, they said, would magically compel all the evil, spendthrift politicians who cruelly wanted to pay the bills and stop running up huge debts instead to make drastic cuts in all the wasteful government programs that the obstructionist party was refusing to pay for. The obstructionists believe that everyone was evil who was trying to run the terrible country the obstructionists loved and wanted to dismantle instead of governing, as the foolish citizens had hired them to do. Instead, the obstructionists believed they should be actively working to destroy and overthrow the awful, terrible government that was preventing everyone from being rich and happy. They hoped one day to bring an end to the United States by drowning it in a bathtub to save it. This they called patriotism. Really, no kidding. They still do. Go figure. Anyway. So, when Republicans and Democrats who only wanted to govern could stand the obstructionist saber-rattling no longer, they fell under the spell of the sequester. <coughs> then, an amazing thing happened. The obstructionists realized that there would be political consequences to drowning the stuff that people really love about the country in that bathtub. They were afraid that they might lose the jobs they had gone to so much trouble to get working for the federal government they hated so much. <coughs> Yeah, I don't get that part either. Anyway, what will we do, said the obstructionists? How will we destroy the government the people love without getting blamed for it, or worse, fired? And then a magical plan occurred to them. They would refuse to drown any of the government at all and insist that everyone else take the heat for the destruction they were too craven to carry out, even though it was pretty much all they talked about. To bend those who kept asking the obstructionists for suggestions to their will, the obstructionists invented a prophecy. Oh, no! They foretold of a terrible, mythical cliff that the whole country would fall off if everyone didn't do what the obstructionists were too chicken shit to do themselves. At the stroke of midnight, on the last day of the year 2012, they warned, if the world hasn't ended on the 21st, you, and by that we mean anyone but us, must have completely wiped out all the debt that we, the obstructionists, have run up. Or, at 12.01 a.m. January 1st, taxes will rocket up to the levels they were during the greatest sustained economic expansion the country has ever known. Apparently that was a bad thing. <laughs> Worse yet, the evil and unstoppable sequester will take all the candy from all the children in the country, end all the social programs, and disarm the military. The lights will go off, and Christmas will be cancelled. If I could do an evil laugh, I'd do one here. Suffice it to say, there'll be a mustache-twirling puppet to do the laugh by the time the traveling company version of this show makes it here and to children's theaters around the country. But the evil voters would not be swayed. They cold-heartedly insisted the obstructionists actually say what they would do to save all this money they were insisting everyone else cut from the parts of the government that the voters loved. 
But the obstructionists were nothing if not pig-headed, so they stood their ground and lost and lost and lost. <laughs> Still, they would not decide, and they would not let anyone else decide either. They just kept telling the same story over and over. So as the clock ticked nearer and nearer midnight on that fateful New Year's Eve, everyone had become convinced there really was a cliff and we really were going to fall. This is the part where the media puppets will scream in terror really loudly for a really long time, kind of like that saber-rattling thing from earlier. Closer and closer the cliff drew, and more and more people believed it was real. Wealth was lost, hiring was postponed, investments weren't made, houses went unsold, and real damage was done to real people. Oh, no! And then, at midnight, at the stroke of twelve... Nothing happened. Instead, they just voted to postpone the deadly sequester for a couple of months. Who knew they could do that, right? Some taxes were raised, rich people got huge breaks on investment income, and the folks who were actually trying to run the government and not destroy it managed once again to do so despite the brave obstructionists' best efforts and fairy stories. To be fair, we're probably going to have to work on the ending when this becomes a puppet show, as children are apparently a much tougher audience than cable news watchers. Chance. But there's always a sequel. Have you heard the one about the fall of the deadly debt ceiling? Yeah. And that's pretty much where we came in. It's like Wagner's Ring Cycle, but longer and less fun. Here's hoping that, if we can't get rid of the obstructionist, that they'll at least hire better writers and come up with a better story. Till next time, this is Breck Artery wishing you happily ever afters, good night, and good dinner. Yeah! To hear more from this special correspondent and other special correspondents who are just as unqualified to hold forth on the topics on which they claim to be experts, listen to The Dinner Party Show with Christopher Rice and Eric Shaw Quinn, the Internet's first live comedy variety show, live casting Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific at thedinnerpartyshow.com.